National Championship. The Florida Gators have won the Southeastern Conference Championship. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo, proud partner of the Florida Gators. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Gator Zone. Happy 2020. Happy New Year to each and every one of you out there. Alongside Megan Parler, Jeff Cardozo with you. We are touching the Gator head, right? What the, uh, the football team does, they run out of that tunnel and they run in front of 90 thousand people and what a heck of a football season it was once again. Yeah Jeff and you're wishing our viewers a happy new year mm -hmm. and I got a little trivia for you to okay. start the show. Dan Mullen is the only football coach to win back-to-back -back New Year's Six Bowl games. How about that? Yeah what a uh, great start in two years for Dan Mullen. So 10 wins two years ago, 11 this year, so 10 carry the one. That's 21 wins <laughs> in two years. Pretty special stuff and like Megan said back-to-back -back New Year's Bowls and victories and what a heck of a time it was down in Miami. A great game, throwing all over the place once again and LaMichael P. Ryan, the senior, gets the MVP and here's your MVP recap. Tonight we are live from Hard Rock Stadium in Miami Gardens where tonight the Florida Gators beat the Virginia Cavaliers in the Capital One Orange Bowl game. Hello again everybody, I'm Mick Hewitt. Welcoming you to another exciting night of Florida Gators football. Just under a year ago, this team was born. Put a lot of work in, a lot of sweat. Everybody, and all the grind, all the effort from weight rooms, from workouts, to practices, training camp, summer conditioning, all through this season. Build up for this moment right now. Build up to be here, go finish this off as this team. The last statement of the 2019 World Series. Our last statement as a team. Our last statement as a family out there on the field. You earned playing in a big time game. You earned playing on the biggest stage. Go out there and enjoy it. Have fun. Play hard. Relentless effort. As hard as we can go for 60 minutes. Every snap as hard as we go for 60 minutes. Find a way to go get ourselves a big time win. All right, let's go finish this up the right way. Here come the Florida Gators. At the 38 yard line. There's the snap and the handoff comes to the running back. Piran off the left side. He gets into the secondary. A beautiful run down the left sideline. The 30, the 20, the 10, the 5. He's going to go. That's a 62-yard touchdown run by LaMarco P. Ryan in the first minute of the game as the Gators lead 6 to nothing. Wide to the right for the Gators, Trent to the left. The snap to Trask, he looks to throw it off the left, he's got a receiver, a catch from P. Ryan. P. Ryan breaks a tackle and he takes it in for a touchdown. Oh my! He looks, he looks, it's some pressure, escapes, runs out to the right. Throws the ball down toward the end zone and throws it high. It's going to be a good catch attempt. They've called it a touchdown. They have indeed. Now the Gators on second and ten. And they give it off a running play. P. Ryan trying to bounce it to the outside across the 40. He's across the 45, across the 50, down the near sideline. A beautiful run by P. Ryan before finally being shoved out of bounds. It's third down and six. The snap to Trask. Looking. Throws it across the grain. Back to the left. He's got a receiver. Copeland inside the 10-yard line. And out of bounds on the far sideline. What a play. There's the snap. The set down. The kick is up and on the way. And it is good. And the Gators have gone back in front. There's the snap to Perkins. Perkins dropping back, and he's grabbed, and the Gators finally get their first sack of the game. Gators have a first down and goal to go as they hand the ball off on running play. P. Ryan trying to bounce outside. 10, 5, touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. The Michael P. Ryan's third touchdown of the night, and the Gators lead 23 to 14. The snap to Bryce Perkins. Perkins under pressure, and down he goes. Oh, my. 49-yard attempt for Evan McPherson. There's the snap, the set down, the kick is up, on the way. It's got distance, it's got direction, and it is good! Now here's Trask on play action, dropping the throw and fires down the field for Cleveland, who makes the grab, gets inside the 25-yard line, handing it off to Piran, running off to the left, inside the 20, got a first down, and taking the ball down the sideline, he's at the pylon! There's the snap to Trask, and he fakes P. Ryan. He's going to run it with P. Ryan out in front of him, and Trask takes it in. The quarterback scoring a one-yard rushing touchdown for the Gators. The snap, and now here's the throw going out to the side. It's a leaping catch, an interception. Picked off Kyrie Elam. Oh, my! Kyrie Elam with an interception near the 
three yard line, tight roping the sideline. Trash to swing it out, throw the pass out to the right to Jefferson at the 10 to 15 to 20, down the sideline to 30, 35 to the 40, and still running down the sideline, crossing midfield. Oh, what a play! Townsend will hold. There's the snap, the set down, the kick is up, and it's on the way, and it is good. And the Florida Gators have won back to back New Year's Six bowl game appearances as Florida tonight puts together another double digit season. They go 21 and 5 in the Dan Mullen era as Florida has beaten Virginia here in the Capital One Orange Bowl game at Hard Rock Stadium. Florida wins 36 to 28. I'm proud of everybody. This was a big time win on the national stage. Okay? Two years you won 21 games. Bought in, 21 games, two New Year's Six Bowl games. Gonna finish in the top 10 for the second year in a row. Cheer for the team and play. Hard to the goal. We'll find our way from Florida. Crank it up! Well, Jeff, obviously they're winning on the field, but they're winning off the field too. Mm -hmm. The guys have such great team chemistry and that helps the winning and being in athletics all these years. It's fun to kind of see them off the field and them hanging out together. Yeah, you, you can certainly tell it. The locker room's just right over there and it was a great locker room. Everybody got along, had a great time. And I think that's, that's the fun part. And we, we hear so much times about that word fun and it's about playing video games, it's getting on the beach, all the things you're about to see in this feature. So fun times down in Miami, and of course, capped off with that Gator victory. Hey, yo, yo. <laughs> We're gonna eat spinach instead of lettuce, you know? Spinach like Popeye, Bill, Strong Ball. Suck it. Oh, it tastes good. <laughs> I had to get a little greens. My mama told me I had to get greens on my food, so I got a little green. It's some pork sausage that's good. Where we going? I ain't never been here before, but I'm just in the vibe, you feel me? Yeet! 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 Uh, oh! Ah! Me and my guys right here, Audi. We said we got that all white on. You feel me? We got that all white on. We got to stick out. I know I'm just a kicker, but we're about to see how I do in these tires. Come on. Come on. Come on, Chester. All right, guys. We're going to test out the strength here. See what, I, see what I'm working with. Boom. What? Oh, it says error. Are you been over here playing with this for five minutes? It says error. Y'all gotta make sure my mama see this. Let her know that her baby is having fun in Miami. I'm gonna go on our own little adventure. Oh, this one. You scared? You can't swim. No way. I can swim. Like Michael Phelps. So fun times for everybody involved, coaching staff, players, radio guys, fans. It was a, a tremendous time down in Miami, but now that 2019 season is over. Dan Mullen has uh, put together another great recruiting class, still to be capped off in February, so a lot of great things happening right now for Florida football. Yeah, Jeff, we're looking forward to 2020, and we're looking forward to our first break, and uh, we're gonna talk a little spring sports and basketball right after this. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo, proud partner of the Florida Gators, and by Gatorade Thirst Quencher, 
the proven sports fuel. Hey everyone and welcome back into Gator Zone. Jeff and I just made our way down the football hallways in front of the weight room where a lot of our student athletes spend a lot of their time just kind of getting better for each and every day and hanging yeah. out together. And I'm getting hyped for the uh, the music. Everybody's getting after it. But I think that's the neatest part about being a student athlete here. You get to interact with football players and all these other teams that are just there. And I remember my first time doing it, I had to do leg presses next to Javon Curse. Oh. Didn't go well for me, but it's, uh, it's where the off season happens and where it makes the regular season get after it. So that's where all the gymnasts were getting ready for 2020. It was an ending that was unpredictable, stunning and heartbreaking. When the Florida gymnastics team did not advance out of regionals to the NCAA championship in 2019, a fire was immediately lit for the returners. And now the 2020 team has more motivation than ever. So right after the competition, it was, it was a really hard time for a lot of us. Um, especially for our two seniors that were graduating. It definitely fueled me more just to know that this is my last year and I don't want to leave University of Florida with any regrets or anything that I could have done better. We try not to live in the past, but we definitely don't forget it and use it as motivation going into this season. With how our competition season ended up last season, you can tell that this team has carried a little bit on their shoulder, but not in a negative way. I feel like uh, this team has grown so much uh, since last season. Despite last year's outcome, the Gators are the third ranked team in the Women's Collegiate Gymnastics Association preseason poll. Florida returned six gymnasts with 17 All-America honors this season, four of those being defending Southeastern Conference event champions as well. We really have a very similar team, but uh, much better team dynamics, uh, a lot of growth individually and together as a team. Coming into the gym a lot more focused, prepared for the day, uh, really they, they know what to expect. It's been a great uh, preseason thus far. A roster of mostly familiar faces does include one new name, Peyton Richards, the Gators' lone freshman from Illinois. She may be the only newcomer, but luckily Peyton has 13 role models to look up to. I think they each show something different, and I think that's what's so special about the team is everyone has something so different to bring to the table. Gymnastics, personality, all of that stuff. Peyton has done a great job adjusting and fitting right in. She's so much fun to have in the gym, and she's doing really great. The biggest strength for the 2020 Gators will be depth. With a roster loaded with talent, fans can expect diverse lineups from the orange and blue this season. We have 13 full floor teams this year that really all could be capable of competing at any given time. However, there's only six spots. Beam, there's 11 that are capable of competing at any given time. And that will be a little bit different uh, for some this season. But in retrospect, we're all looking to see and know what's best for the team moving forward. So um, I think everybody's in a really good spot. We have so many people on this team that bring so many different, unique styles, routines, lines, personalities that I really think bring out this team. And I think everyone has their best interest in mind. They're really working on the small details inside and outside of the gym to help the team overall. The 2020 Gators plan on using last year as a learning experience for the upcoming season. The past will always be there, but it can't dominate the future taking that moment in time that was so painful and so heartbreaking, something that I never wish upon any of my student athletes. However, taking it and using it as an opportunity for growth to get better, to be able to move forward. And the cool thing is we all enjoy what we do and we all have another opportunity to showcase this amazing team. There's no doubt this team is hungry and ready to show Gator Nation and the rest of the country what they're all about. For Gator Zone, I'm Shelby Grinnell. Well, thanks so much, Shelby and Jeff. They added a, another uh, nice. year up here. 2019 SEC Outright Regular Season Champs. And it was the first year in the SEC that they did Outright Regular Season Champs, not just the tournament champs. So they got the inaugural year down. But they did, and they've only got one freshman this year. So that means a lot of experience coming back for uh, the gymnastics squad. Really looking forward to what they have to offer. And 
Speaking of experience, what about Cam Newbauer? Year three now for him leading this women's basketball team. They've already done a tremendous job in the non-conference schedule, won their first home SEC match. So uh, good things in store for Coach Cam. Yeah, he's doing a great job recruiting. And one of those great recruits, Arielle Johnson. Yeah. She's only a sophomore. She played so much her freshman year, coming all the way from California. And she was kind of just a shooter, but really took it upon herself over the season and last summer to really be a driver as well. So let's learn a little bit more about Ari. When you see Arielle Johnson on the court in year two with the Gators, you see a player who is doing more, developed her game, and is scoring in bunches. Many would say much improved. Her roommate, teammate, and one of her closest friends can see the change from within. I think that she's more confident even like talking to the team and communicating. And I think that helped a lot with her game inside the court as well. Because when you're confident, when you're comfortable with your teammates, it's better to be confident on the court with them. And Ari made it her mission this summer to work on a part of her game she hadn't used as much. So I definitely wanted to work on my game, like attacking the basket instead of just shooting threes all the time. So I've definitely been working on that in the summer a lot and still every once in a while after practice or before. So definitely my inside game. Johnson's versatility has helped open up her game and her hard work has paid off. Number 32 had a new career high in points this season with 16, and her developed game shows, all while keeping a super steady demeanor. It's what she sees during the game that keeps her mind right. I think just once it, once I see my, my shot go in the hoop, you know, it gives me you know, the more encouragement to you know, keep attacking, keep going as hard as you can, just try and make the next shot, or try and get one of your teammates a better shot. So just seeing the ball in the hoop, it's a great feeling and it's just once you see it you just want to keep doing it. With the experience gained, a strong work ethic and the support of her teammates, Johnson's sophomore season should be one to remember. Good job on that story. I was I was interested, I was clued in and uh, certainly interested in what Ari and the uh, the rest of the women's basketball team can do. Looking forward to uh, everything that they have at the table. So get to Exact Tech Arena, the O-Dome, and uh, watch these ladies. Some good things are happening. Yeah, Jeff, and I think my goal for 2020 is to be a little bit more like Ari Johnson. She is just so humble. Yeah. She has this calm, cool, collected confidence about herself. So I just want to be as cool as Ari when I grow up. We'll do it. We'll start <laughs> practicing while we uh, take this break, and we'll uh, school her up on how to do that. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo, proud partner of the Florida Gators and by Gatorade Thirst Quencher, the proven sports fuel. Hey everybody, welcome back to Gator Zone. Jeff and Megan here in the media room for post game for Dan Mullen, where you see those press conferences on television. Well, all the uh, student athletes have started back this semester, classes have resumed, but for some student athletes, they don't have to make that walk to class anymore or get on the scooters, because that's <laughs> the, uh, the new thing now, because they graduated in the fall and certainly a, a sad day as we had to say goodbye to uh, some really good ones. Yeah, but before they go, you know, everyone at Hawkins Center that helped them get to where they are today, their coaches, some of their professors, I'm sure, get to hang out with them at the fall graduation luncheon and kind of celebrate them one last time. So here's a look back at that luncheon and everything that went on. Today's a special day for us. Uh, it's kind of our Super Bowl in the Hawkins Center and since our World Series or NBA Finals or you know, majors, it's, uh, you get a chance to recognize our student athletes for their hard work and they, they earn something that they'll keep for the rest of their life and that can open pathways for them when their playing days come to an end. Today was pretty cool, you know, it's a great opportunity for the seniors uh, from all the sports to come here and be recognized for their work. You know, people spend three, four, five years in the classroom working hard uh, as well as grinding and getting on the field. So it's one thing to be recognized on the field out there on game day, but it's even better, you know, at the end of your school career where you get to come here and you get to have a whole ceremony just for you and your peers. It's, it's awesome. Well, we're so fortunate we've had these young people represent uh, the Gators uh, during their time here. And uh, we always tell our student athletes, we want you to have a championship experience with integrity, but there's three things we want them to leave here with. One is an education, the other is hopefully a championship, and the third is to have relationships that are gonna last the rest of their life. And uh, this, like I mentioned, this is a special group and, and I'm confident they're gonna leave here with the things that really matter and they're gonna continue to be a part of Gator Nation for the rest of their life. The degree means, I mean, probably more than the football side, just because it's gonna last a lot longer. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, me graduating the first time from West Virginia was a great accomplishment, but me get to graduate again from a, a better university, I mean, it, it feels like, you know, I'm on top right now. So 
You know, it, it feels good, you know, it means a lot, you know, getting a higher level of education from number seven school in the, in the country. College athletics is about relationships and, and it's really special to, to have a relationship with the young people that come and, and are part of our program and uh, this group in particular is represented so well and uh, it's been fun to, to be a part of their lives. We're all Gators at the end of the day, you know, you know, we all love competing so, you know, we see our peers out there on the field, on the court competing, it's like we're right there with them, you know, it's a bond that we've built since we stepped on the campus as freshmen, you know, bringing the young guys up and learning from the older guys who were here before us, it's awesome, you know, we're just all one big Gator family. This isn't just a four or five year commitment, this is lifetime and that we want them to stay in touch and that we're here to help them anytime we can. Now, Jeff, another big shout out to our academic advisors and everyone at Hawkins Center for all that they do to help our student athletes be successful in the classroom. So I'll give a shout out to uh, Ann Hughes. Ann's still around, hard to believe, uh, 20 years ago, but she was tremendous as uh, everybody else is in that Hawkins Center. All right, final break happens now, but when we get back, some top plays to start off the new year. He's going here. Ooh, she got the back coming out of the backfield. Look at Megan drawing up some ball plays. Pretty special stuff right there. I think we need to leave that for uh, for Coach Mullen as they get ready for the 2020 season. Put that into the playbook, Coach. We will uh, leave it for you. See, if I'm the quarterback, though, I'm hitting this dude on the post sure. and making it happen. That would, of course, be a top play if she was throwing it. Here's some more top plays from the student athletes. Today's top plays are brought to you by Nike. Another open look, three left corner, and this one is good. Oh, the kick, Briggs, wide open. That's just like shooting practice. Very clean form, good hand stand there. There's that swing I was talking about that Owen likes so much. Right up to the double layout. Oh, right. Stop landing. What an opening routine. So some phenomenal plays to start off 2020. Again, Happy New Year to you. I couldn't make a, a good of a play as Megan did, so I just wrote on here, we're finished. That's Gator Zone. Happy New Year. Plain and simple, but we've got a lot of great things in store for each and every one of you in 2020, don't we? Yep, Jeff, we're excited for the spring season to start. Basketball is full swing and conference play. So plenty of ways to follow, like always, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok to follow your Florida Gators. Or if you're not savvy with the uh, technical stuff, just draw on the whiteboard yeah. like we do. It, uh, <laughs> it makes it very easy. Well, that was an easy opening uh, show to start off the new year, but watch throughout the year because, again, we've got plenty of fun stuff involved. She's my partner. Megan Parler. And all the, uh, the great camera work of Nicole. I am Jeff Cardozo. We'll see you guys next time.